those who came out to support. We welcome you back to the fact of the matter, Ira Jam Spirit Talk here on a Sunday evening. We thank you for staying with us because we know you have choices. And for that, we're obligated to continue to bring you information of purpose. And that's why the next presentation is such of such importance because it, it is part of that whole persona. And when we see, for example, what took place this last Tuesday, the emergence of Gen Z, young man there in outside Orlando who replaced uh, Miss Val Hemmings seat there in Congress, 25 year old going to Congress. Yeah, good things, good things, good things. The man has been a community organizer since the age of 15. So he's not new to this, he's just true to this. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome the man of the hour himself who promotes these type of situations that are so important. Can we find Miguel anywhere? Where, where is Miguel? Absolutely. Miguel. Erwin, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Uh, doing fantastic, of course. Uh, Ira, good evening to you. And uh, Ira, good evening to our distinguished listeners, wherever in the world you're tuning in from. We thank you. I am Miguel Anthony Melbourne. This week on Melbourne Motivation, I'm excited to introduce a dynamic and a pioneering young woman who is leading the charge in creating opportunities for our youth. Let me tell you a little bit more. Melody Joanne Centeno is an applied behavior analysis therapist, psychodrama practitioner, and New York State licensed master social worker. As a public advocate and worldwide motivational speaker, Melody uses her story to empower youth and equip child welfare professionals with culturally responsive practices. A former foster youth, she founded Foster Care Unplugged in 2016 to enrich the lives of children with a focus on develop developing positive resiliency skills. Her leadership style fuses professional practice, modeling, and teaching through personal experience. A graduate and adjunct professor with Delphi University, Melody also lends her talents as a talk show host, actress, film director, editor, and producer. She has successfully produced short films starring foster care youth. Known as The Plug, she's highly esteemed as a role model who leaves a lasting impression. And her goal is to educate minds, stir hearts, and activate a will within people to become greater. And so with that, I welcome Melody. Welcome to Melbourne Motivation on Irie Jam. How are you feeling this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you, Miguel. So nice to see you again. Absolutely. I'm excited about this conversation. And trust me, audience listeners, this is a mere introduction. This is a young lady that I know I'm going to have to invite back again and again. And so, you know, Melody, when I read your bio and try to understand all these amazing things that you're doing, my first thought is you must have figured out how to get more than 24 hours out the day. And if you did, please tell us how you do all these things. <laughs> but secondly, you also seem to have found a perfect fusion between your own creative pursuits and your professional training as a licensed therapist and social worker. Was this your master plan all along or along the way you discovered that you didn't have to choose one or the other? You know, one of our core values at Foster Care Unplugged is transparency. So I'm going to be really transparent and say, no, it was not <laughs> a part of the master plan. <laughs> um, it actually came out of, of um, turmoil, internal turmoil, because originally Foster Care Unplugged was just supposed to be a campaign. There was a law that I was trying to get passed in the city. I had to make noise about the law. And so I launched a campaign. It grew arms and legs and we got a lot of support. Uh, we did a sneaker drive and raised 501 pair of sneakers in 48 hours. Uh, thanks to our partners, shout out to PCNY. We did turkey drives, 30,000 turkeys, 20,000 book bags. It just grew arms and legs. And so I'm like, I wanna go back to acting, but I'm now flying a plane and building it at the same time. And so I said, how do I marry the love of acting and my vocation, right? Because I do believe mm -hmm. in school that your vocation becomes your occupation. And I remember when I was in acting school at the graduate school, I was sitting in class and I said, everybody in here is in therapy. They just don't realize it because this mm. activity is called that. But in therapy, we call that the empty chair. I said, whoa, we have something here. 
performance-based practice. Mm. So I coined the term performance-based practice, merging therapy with drama therapy or acting, merging therapy with acting. And so now I was able to go back on the screen, do some therapy and bring the foster care youth along with me. Whoa. Whoa, what a, what a cool story. And, and what I love about it is it all came together by you taking action and by you following a purpose. And, you know, you created a movement and now took that movement and figured out how to marry the two. What a powerful story. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I was doing some research and, and one of the powerful quotes I came across attributed to you is, you know, we are breaking every stigma associated with being a foster child. And, and so can you just take us a little further into that thought? And in doing so, give us a proper introduction of the organization you created, Foster Care Unplugged, and the unique ways in which you help our youths transform into, into young adults. Absolutely. So breaking every stigma associated with being a foster care youth, came from my ability to merge personal experience with professional practice. When I was growing up in the foster care system, so many foster homes, I lived in every borough, including Long Island, uh, when you factor in New York State, I would get hit with commentary that was rooted around stigmas. It would be, you're too pretty to be a foster child. Well, what are we supposed to look like? Mm. You're kind of smart. You're, you're a little bit too smart to be a foster child. Well, why do you think that we're dumb? Mm. <laughs> you know, are you bad? Do you steal? Why is the conversation about if I'm a thief and not about all my basic needs being met? Mm. So I wanted to break those stigmas associated with the title and the term foster care child. And so that's where that came from. Wow. And so Foster Care Unplug, we're all about bringing awareness creating initiatives and developing partnerships. And so we wanna bring awareness to who we are, right? Because it's not a monolith. Foster care youth come with unique stories. None of us are the same. We may have similarities, but we're all very unique in our own right. And so we want to bring awareness. We wanted to create initiatives in terms of developing programming that was gonna help us with non-traditional forms of therapy, psychodrama or performance-based practice. And we wanted to create those initiatives because we understand that foster care youth go through trauma before they enter the foster care system. And we know that they go through trauma when they navigate mm -hmm. through the child mm -hmm. system. Wow, the, you know, the, the work that you and your team are doing is, is so powerful. And when we look at the backdrop of the last few years, we know the challenges that existed before. And now it's not just, you know, isolated. It's it's a global challenge that we have. And the, the work that you do and the way you're you're pursuing it, it is, I mean, a conversation that, yes, please go as global as possible and articulate this work that you're doing and some of the solutions you're creating. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on quickly, I know you're big on partnerships. Can you just quickly just rattle off some of the partnerships, some of the different events that, that you and your team have been able to do over the years? Sure. Well, I named the sneaker drive uh, with PCNY that we've done in the past, our book bag drives, our turkey drives. Uh, we do um, an annual unity basketball game where I take 30 police officers and 30 foster care youth. And we have a big game at St. Francis College, downtown Brooklyn, to break That's the stigmas wrong. associated with being a cop, to break the stigmas associated with being a foster care youth. And so officers can know our youth on a first name basis. So when you see Johnny in the street at 11 o'clock, you may want to ask him what's going on in the foster home that made him want to leave the home that night, as opposed to thinking mm -hmm. he's getting into some trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, I love just listening to what you and your team are doing. And that's because a lot of folks will have these ideas. You know, this should happen. We should get the youth and have our officers and have them meet and have basketball. And so it's it's refreshing, especially for our listeners that's hearing this for the first time to know that the work is being done and what might be necessary is how do we become aware of it and how do we continue to support movements like yours? And so, you know, you said basketball game. Now I want to show up and play. Please let me know when that game is. I, I, I want to at least be cheered in the crowd. Uh, Melody, this coming Thursday, you are premiering a, a, a new short film. It's called Where We From. 
Can you just give our listeners a teaser as to what this film is about? And if they are fortunate enough to get a seat, where, where is this event taking place? So our short film projects, let's take it a step back really quickly. We do therapy with the foster care youth for 12 weeks. And then we bring in a writer and we bring in an acting coach and we write their stories. And then we coach them. So they get to either play themselves or someone else from therapy or another situation that just is going on in child welfare. And then we screen it as a movie or as a play. And so where we're from is our latest cohort and some of the challenges that they have gone through in the foster care system. We're themed around systems, the welfare system, the healthcare system, the immigration system are some of the stories that came out of those sessions. And so we want to highlight how those systems have directly impacted our foster care youth in New York City. And so we have some law enforcement system challenges that we bring to the light as well. Um, I play a police officer in the movie. So you get to see me as, as a cop. Um, and, so, and so we highlight some of those themes and so if you, if you, if you want to come to the show, we have a few seats left. Uh, we're almost sold out, but it takes place at the Mark O'Donnell Theater, which was formerly known as the Actors Fund Theater, downtown Brooklyn, not far from the Barclays Center. If you go to fostercareunplugged.org, you can purchase your tickets. Wow. You know, as, as I hear you describe this, I'm sure our listeners is with me. And to me, this sounds like a production. This sounds like an approach that belongs in every school on the planet, you know? And this sounds like the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life, you know? So just congratulations to you and, and congratulations to everybody involved. And you better believe I'm gonna be in the house. Um, what I do wanna ask next, Melody, is, you know, just based on your personal experience, your professional practice, you know, when the guardians, when the institutions and the organizations that stand as a resource to foster care youth, when they seek your thought leadership, what is the central message or is there a central message that you like to leave with them in regards to the best approach to aid in our youth in this day and age? Well, first of all, foster care unplug is not for the child welfare system and we're not against the child welfare system. So it really depends on who we're leading at the moment and who our audience is for that moment. And so one thing that I like to lead with is cultural competency, right? That's very important. We talk about that word and we think about, oh, so we just got to be aware of the West Indian culture versus the African-American culture. For me, of course, those things are important as well. But foster care children, emerging adults, young people, we come with our own type of culture that has to be respected, that has to be learned, and that has to be embraced. Because we do not care about what you have to say unless mm -hmm. we understand how much you care. So mm -hmm. once you're able to show that you have cultural response approaches to how you come and speak to us, we will let some of those layers and those guards down and you will see the beauty of who we are as individuals. Wow, Melody, you know, it's, it's easy to watch a television show, a movie, and, you know, identify a character as a superhero because of what they're doing. Certainly you and certainly all your colleagues that do this type of work day in and day out are superheroes. And, you know, it goes without saying the difference that we know it is making in our next generation. And just so again, salute to you and your entire team and everyone involved with this approach that you all are taking to make a difference in the world. And so with that, with that, thank you so much, Melody. Thank you for sharing this meaningful conversation with us on Melbourne Motivation. Can you just tell our listening audience where they can follow you, where they can learn more? How can they continue to support your movement? Sure, you can follow us on Instagram at fostercare underscore unplugged, right? Um, like you unplug an outlet. Um, you can follow me at Melody JC. And um, if you want more information, if you want to volunteer, or if you're a foster care youth that wants to get into some kind of therapy that's non traditional, right? Because we know how we feel about one on one therapy, um, you can definitely come on our website. We're also 
casting all the time. If you've been adopted before, if you're an alumni that's been in foster care, we do not close our doors to you either. You can come on in. We'll embrace you into our community so that you can receive some services as well. Absolutely amazing. And I'd also encourage to all our organizations out there listening that, you know, you absolutely love, you're intrigued by what you've heard. Please, please, please reach out to Melody, right? Please reach out to her. So we'll leave it there. Thank you so much again, Melody, for taking this time. Erwin. Thank you very much, Miguel, and all the best to you, Melody. Thanks for your support to mankind. Miguel, we want to we wanna, we wanna keep you in our, in our ear and in our eye shot. So how do we do that? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal and professional goals are to help the youth be best prepared for college, career, and beyond so that we can have more melodies out there. So please visit mycollegepod.com. That's mycollegepod.com to gain access to Path to the Purpose latest college and career prep innovation. Follow Melbourne Motivation on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. But until next time, please be safe and live with big energy. Erwin, next week. The best to you. Until next week, all the best. There you have it, uh, Melbourne Motivation.